Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Festival of Neighbors Living Room Street neighborhood in the basement of Paul's Church. My name is Georgina. I'm from the Westmount neighborhood. Hello to my neighbors in Westmount, if any of you are out there. Uh, I wanted to show you a little bit of doing. So here's Heather, who will be <laughs> next. Some of our activities that we do, Better Tent City as well. So it's a great space. You've never gotten a chance to come down here. We can't wait to see you together once again. Hi, everyone. I hope everyone is having a great day so far. Um, I'm a co-op student from the University of Waterloo. Um, I just want to share with you our plans for the day. Uh, we're going to be showing a few videos and announcing some prizes, as well as recognizing some neighborhoods that have put in extra effort this year. And I would now like to turn this over to John McDonald, the founder of the Festival of Neighborhoods. Thanks kindly, Hannah. So welcome, everyone. Um, in these times of, I'm calling them the times of COVID, as though it's a 19th century novel, but uh, we are living it in the 21st century. So I'd just like to acknowledge uh, the neighborhoods that uh, are here or represented. I'm not sure whether they're all been able to join us or not, but uh, we, we've got um, interest in, in things happening in the Schneider Creek neighborhood, in the Williamsburg neighborhood, in the Country Hills neighborhood. Um, Daniel Kemp um, is joining us from Henson Shaving. Um, his neighborhood is Kitchener, <laughs> which is wonderful. Uh, Laurel Wood, Laure um, the Auditorium neighborhood, Country Hills, Westmount, uh, Lydia, uh, Nadine Green from A Better Ted City, um, a wonderful neighborhood, the downtown neighborhood itself, uh, as represented, I believe, by the mayor, Cherry Park, Forest Hill, Central Frederick, the Alpine neighborhood, and Huron, the North Six neighborhood, the Victoria Park neighborhood, the Old Berlin Town neighborhood. Um, myself, I live in the Innovation District, and uh, I'm one of an increasing number of people who are living in and around that district, and will hope to grow that neighborhood. And Alexandra is in Activa. Heather Majori is at Joseph and Queen, and Hannah's at Duke and Water. So lots of representation from across the city uh, for today and over the course of the year. Joining us as well is Mark Harris, who is uh, graciously acting as our host today, and counselors Dave Schneider, I believe, or uh, Christine Michaud from Ward 4, Kelly galloway Sealark from Ward 5, and Debbie Chapman from Ward 9. I haven't looked in the list of participants, but I'm, I'm trusting they're all here. And of course, we're also joined by uh, Mayor Barry Verbandvik uh, today. So um, all of the registrants who have um, stepped up in terms of neighborhoods joining us today will be receiving a, a, a gift award that they can use towards uh, creative ways of bringing their neighbors together. And with that, I think I'm going to hand it over to Alexandra, who is going to provide the to te territorial acknowledgement. Cheers, and let's have a great one. We're meeting on the traditional shared lands of Haudenosaunee, Atavarandran, and Danishnabe peoples. We pay respect to their original claim on the lands and to the traditions of the first displaced people. The territory we're on is on Block 2 of the Haldeman Tract, a promise never fulfilled to the Six Nations of the Grand River for serving the British during the American Revolution. In April 2021, we acknowledge that Haudenosaunee Confederacy of Chiefs, their council announced a moratorium on development within the entire Haldeman Tract, including Waterloo Region. Those are probably things we all know. So um, I just want to we've start heard this them. We uh, say morning them. again with looking at uh, what the year has brought to us. So I did some research uh, in preparation and looked at all of the different events that neighborhoods have put on this year. And I noticed that there were many, many categories of the types of gatherings people held, but four stood out to me in particular. Um, there were lots of earth and nature based events. I noticed that um, 
last year's celebration put an emphasis on trying to work sustainability into neighborhood gatherings and lots of the neighborhoods held cleanups with litter bags provided by the city or just encourage people to get out into nature because those are the types of gatherings that are easier to host with COVID restrictions, with social distancing. Um, There were also lots of, sorry, Mark, I'm just not sure what the next one is. Uh, Yes, Halloween. It's always a big time for people to get together. And uh, pumpkin carving is always fun because those are things on your doorsteps that you can share with your neighbors um, when you're out for walks. Um, Also lots of contests for decorating and dressing up. And music. Music was a big part of bringing people together in the past year because, again, you can enjoy it at a distance and it can be heard even if you're blocks away. Um, And it's a big thing for celebrating. So that was really nice to see lots of porch parties and uh, just music nights in general. And lastly, the holidays. Always a great time to get together with the people you know, be it family, friends, or neighbors. So Um, There have been some bucket lists. These are from last year. Um, Carol sings, again, virtual. And yeah, it's just been great to see what uh, the neighborhoods have hosted this year. Uh, We'll look into some in particular. uh, So we're coming at Um, you today from our set, which is a living room. And uh, this uh, this was something we created to create space for people to reflect upon and to story share around um, how COVID was affecting them. Um, So we're going to share with you a video. I'm going to let the video do most of the speaking. Um, There was four neighborhoods that we uh, engaged with on this project. Uh, We uh, actually engaged here at the uh, the, um, SDC in our Civic Hub in the Great Hall where we are right now with uh, Shiv Tower who um, does an amazing, he did an amazing event around breathing. Uh, Then we also uh, went to a better tent city. Uh, We went to a community garden in the area. And um, we also celebrated with um, Bring on the Sunshine this year. And that was our first one. So I'm not going to say a lot more. I had this whole pitch about how you can like get involved and you can book the living room and you can do all these awesome things. Um, but I'm not I'm not going to do that sales pitch with you right now. Um, you if you're interested in this after, by all means, just get a hold of me. Uh, you can get a hold of me here at uh, at the SDC. Uh, you can also contact me um, by phone, uh, 519-404-2019, and uh, heather at uh, waterlooregion.org. And I think we can just go ahead and play it, Mark. Stresses that just come from life. Um, so next, we're going to be going into a, a video that the Williamsburg Community Association made um, that they call a year in review. So just looking at what they've done in the past year, um, it was hosted by Laura, who began as a volunteer for the Williamsburg Community Association um, when it first began in 2008 and has become increasingly more involved, helping with newsletters and other social media. And then in 2010 was hired to be program manager. Um, She really sees the importance of making connections and helping people make those connections. and shares all the benefits of it. So let's go right into that video. It's it's not overly too long, so. Since we're together, we might as well say, would you be mine? So I'm gonna hand it off to Laura and Nadine, who were the ones who participated in the exchange. A bit of background. I've lived in the auditorium neighborhood for the last 23 years. I was on the board for many years uh, at the beginning. Uh, And I'm really grateful to the Festival of Neighborhoods for uh, some great legacy projects uh, in our neighborhood. This exchange, it started with a walk. We had two beautiful walks. We walked through the neighborhood, uh, the odd, uh, my neighborhood at home where I live. And then Suzanne joined us and we walked through a better tent city. And we had some great conversations about the places we live and about our neighbors. And it was really powerful for me. Um, I'm privileged to be. I love the neighbors. I, you know, I live and work here. First, I should say my name is Nadine Green, and I'm the site coordinator of a Better Ten City. 
I've been living at a better ten city since it began April 20th, 2020. Thank God he did because he built the patio for us. God is working. And the neighbor, I love being here. I, I'm I'm coming to you live from my tiny home. As, As you can see, in your Jamaica neighborhood. Um, what changes have you seen? How long have you lived in your neighborhood? You know, I, I live in the West Mount area. I'm in Belmont Village. I've seen a lot of changes over the years in how the businesses have come in and some businesses have left. So if I was going to take you to my neighborhood, Belmont Village, I would take you to the sconery. I would buy you a scum. <laughs> I would uh, take you to the Iron Horse Trail. I would walk up town. I would show off all the great houses in the West Mount area. You know, I'm really lucky to have all these things to talk about. I'd also talk a little bit about the changes I've seen uh, maybe some of the worries I might have about my neighborhood, because that's a genuine experience, okay? So we're going to take a little bit of time in our breakout rooms. It's going to be about six or seven of you, and hopefully you've had a chance to really start thinking about it, going on, about what makes your neighborhood special and what you want to share. So think a little bit, and we're going to take a little bit of turns in our breakout rooms. We're going to share maybe one or, or two things about your neighbor that you want to share. Also, think about which neighborhood did you want to learn more about. Um, sometimes I think I should learn more about the Cherry Park neighborhood. It's so close to where I am, and I really just go there for the festival. So shout out to Cherry, Cherry Park neighborhood. I want to visit your neighborhood soon. Um, so we're going to break out into our business now. Hello everyone, welcome back. I hope you had successful dates. I know I did. I found I found my, my neighborhood somewhere, I think. Uh, so we're gonna share a little bit of um, if you found a neighbor that you're gonna visit, um, if we, who you're gonna exchange with and why. And feel free to enter in your email addresses in the chat if you found a, a person to, to neighborhood date. So who wants to go first and share um, what neighborhood they're gonna exchange and why? Into the fall was our COVID comeback bingo, which was a way to give activities to people to reconnect or connect with new neighbors and just get out in their neighborhoods. Uh, we had a few submissions and um, Susan Fullop from Central Frederick gets the award for submitting hires. Walking um, my neighborhood um, with my dog, chatting with my neighbors, doing all the local events. It's just sort of everyday life in, in Central Frederick neighborhood. It's an awesome place. And Susan, you know what's awesome is you just won $100 to go towards your neighborhood. Yay! <laughs> <laughs> we have so, a very active neighborhood association, so it's great. So I'm going to pass it off to Dan. Um, there we go. Um, there, there is our, our winner. Interested in the, the plant hanger? Um, workshop. I thought that it had the best of many worlds, um, community, um, doing things together, um, and just sort of introducing new new hobbies and new pastimes for maybe people who didn't participate. So um, I think this is really great. And uh, congratulations to uh, Frederick Neighborhood Association. Uh, but uh, really share like uh, how COVID has has changed or or shifted the way that you are relating with your neighbors. Um, I had an awesome, I had an awesome group of folks and we had fun. At least I had fun. I don't know if they had fun, but I had fun. So whatever. Um, I was wondering if Bill uh, would be willing to reflect back. And changes, well, you know, um, responding to COVID of course, um, but this notion of, of using Zoom uh, as a way of bringing people together, great for video conferencing. The idea of meeting outside instead of meeting inside um, the, at the Cherry Park entrance, a great idea. Um, I, I, of course, uh, spoke from Country Hills perspective about the community gardens. Um, it's, I think we're very adaptable. I, I was saying that at first it felt like we really were going some, through something together when COVID first started, that there was a real big sense of community and like encouragement through messages and being outdoors. And then everyone got COVID fatigue and doesn't <laughs> they don't want to go to any more Zoom meetings and none of our event spaces are available and you can't meet up in person and even outside it didn't really feel safe for a long time um, and now that you know hopefully we're getting near the end of it with the vaccines and um, and you know things are getting a little bit back more to normal that I feel like we're becoming more the community we were two years ago again. Uh, yeah, we had 
uh, in the Victoria Park neighborhood, um, we went online with Zoom and we found that um, we were having more participation at our meetings, like more people were actually attending. And then in the actual meetings, there was, there was more discussion. And um, we used Zoom also to host a couple of, um, of, of community um, educational sessions. One was around, uh, and, and, um, and, and to bring other people in who had different concerns. So one was around, um, use of the trails and uh, especially the Iron Horse Trail as it started to get very busy with walkers and, and cyclists and um, Peter on, people on motor, uh, motorized scooters and so on. And so it was a really good chance um, to get everybody in the community uh, to participate in that. And, and I think that there were maybe 20, 25 people that were on that uh, on that Zoom call with Niall Lobley from the city, from the city. So I, um, we have one of the biggest there. gardens in the city. We're just over 12,000 square feet with 70 different garden plots. Um, we have children sized plots and raised accessible plots. And we just kind of went in day one, making the space for everyone. So we have an area for children, small four foot by four foot plots. We have raised accessible plots off to the one side. And then in between, it's just a whole bunch of different adult sized plots in general. But with 70 plots, that means we have 70 garden members plus family members, significant people others, people participating um, as well. Um, you know, as our as our community continues to to grow, um, certainly there's changes that uh, we're all working through um, in terms of balancing intensification, um, while also looking at how do we you know provide for additional uh, green space and additional amenities um, to support those changes that are happening. I mean, there are challenges right now around housing affordability that are happening, um, quite frankly, across the country and, 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 and across the world. And a lot of it actually came uh, as a result of, you know, uh, people looking to move from larger urban centers into mid-sized communities as part of the pandemic. And it's, uh, it's a topic that uh, we're not just, you know, facing and dealing with here and in, um, in Kitchener or in Ontario or in Canada, but it's one that cities around the world, in fact, are dealing with uh, right now. And I think, um, you know, the, the, uh, the last point that I want to make that, um, you know, Zoom was a blessing. I think we, 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 we heard from everyone. It was a way of, of staying connected. I know uh, I've got a group of friends that from the first Saturday of COVID through till now, unless we were together in person, have gotten together partially or fully every single Saturday uh, for the last 20 months. And, uh, you know, sometimes the odd person was missing because they had another commitment, but it's been uh, it's been great. But there's also been Zoom fatigue and, and you know, I think what it all speaks to is just our, our, our insatiable desire as human beings to actually see each other, to be able to, you know, uh, shake hands, to hug, to see the whites of each other's eyeballs, whatever it is, uh, we, uh, we, we, we enjoy it and, and we want to be able to, to be with people again. And I think we certainly are getting there. Um, you know, it's been great to see how our community has done uh, its part in terms of responding to the vaccine. Hopefully we'll see that now as the, uh, as the kids vaccine uh, becomes available in the, in the coming days and, uh, and as people continue to take up their boosters because that's all going to be key for us to, to move forward. So just thank you to everyone and uh, have a great holiday season.